Hello folks, this is the Riles playing Slay the Spire. <clears throat> I'll be playing as the Defect, that's the only character I have not, well, I haven't beaten the game with two characters yet. And I say beat the game very loosely because... Of course there are the Ascension modes. So even if you beat the Act 3 boss, uh, you can then <clears throat> do another run in Ascension Mode, which make thing, makes things tougher and adds an Act 4. And if you can do that with all four characters, even then you haven't really be beaten the game because there are achievements. So we have a long ways to go. Okay, let's look at the map. We've got our two whale bonuses here. Looks like the most elites we can face off against is two. If we chose the enemy, enemy start combat with 1 HP in the next 3 combats bonus, we would only be able to snipe this one elite on the left, maybe. <clears throat> so we'd have two fights, and then two unknowns, and one of those unknowns could be a fight. So I like the max HP better. <clears throat> Let's see, who are we facing? We're facing the Guardian. The Guardian has like two modes, an attack mode and a defense mode. When he's in attack mode, he hits for big damage. When he's in defensive mode, he still attacks, but he does less damage. But he also also has an ability Sharp Hide, which means anytime we attack, we take three damage automatically. So if I wanted to take on two elites, which is the maximum I could take on in this act, this particular act, this particular instance of Act 1, I should say, to be more technically correct, Looking at a path here, where there's a lot of unknowns, Let's do a bunch of enemy combats. By the time I get to the elite, I 
might be too weak. So on that opening hand, I only drew one defend, so I could only play one defend. I need 13 damage, and I have 12 with these two strikes, and my lightning ward will finish them off. Alright, here's our first choice of cards. And I've been, uh... Watching a few videos of Slay of the, Slay of the Spire Pros... Ranking, uh, cards for the defect. And Sweeping Beam is not high on the list. <sighs> Although it's certainly not a card that is bad. I think Rebound is going to be my pick, although Steam Barrier is not bad at all either. It's a 0 energy 6 block. So the first couple times you play it, it's just as good as a defend, except for it's even better because it is 0 energy. And then it s sort of gets worse. I'm going to go with Rebound, that's a nice solid attack card. And I can Rebound a Zap or a Dual Cast. Now, if I was feeling lucky, I'd go for the Louse on the right and hit him with three strikes. <clears throat> that would be 18 damage. Leaving him with two health. Leaving him with three health, and my Lightning Orb may hit him, it may not. So to guarantee a kill, I'm going to strike the lower HP louse. And notice how the lightning orb's passive. When it hits the louse, it doesn't trigger the curl up ability. Uh, you have to read the text carefully on these on these abilities and just in general in the whole game you have to read text with the scrutinizing eye it says on receiving attack damage rolls up and gains six block so the so the three damage of the three passive damage from the lightning orb is damage that's for sure, but it's not attack damage, it's not coming from an attack card. So, curl up does not trigger. Interesting little detail to note. Anyways. Um, this guy is just in. So 
So notice when I dual cast there, I evoked a lightning orb, which did attack damage. Sorry, which did damage, but not attack damage, therefore curl up did not trigger. Therefore, we did not have to fight through six points of block to kill the louse. Okay, let's choose a card. Got heat sinks. Whenever you play a power card, draw one card. That's interesting if you have powers in your deck already, which we don't. Fusion, channel one plasma. <clears throat> it costs two energy, so the way it works is you spend two energy on fusion. A plasma orb goes into your empty orb slot. The first available empty orb slot. And then you get one energy back. So say you have three energy, play, you spend two uh, to play fusion. You'd have one energy left to do other things than that with that hand. And plasma, uh, the plasma effect The energy gain doesn't occur till the end of the turn, right? So it's not like you can put a fusion into your empty orb slot, or a plasma, I'm sorry, into your empty orb slot, and then you gain back one energy right away. It doesn't work like that. So on the turn that you play it, you're not seeing the benefit of that extra energy. It's the turn after. So that makes this card a bit of a slow card. Which isn't desirable in Act 1. Uh, most people who I take, it, take advice from on this game, who seem to be pretty... Experienced, tend to favor pure damage in some block in Act 1. So I'm going to take a Compile Driver. Which currently can draw us a maximum of one card because we only have Lightning Orbs. Now on that last turn, there was an option for me to only play defends, but that means I'd have there's I'd have no left energy left over to play attacks, and I think the best way to mitigate mitigate damage in this game in multi enemy fights. is to do enough damage to kill an enemy that's attacking you. That's just my line of thought, though.
Another way I've heard to structure the thought, thought process during combat is first figure out how much you need to block for, and if you can block for that much, then do it. Then focus on playing attacks. And I like that. Sort of gives you a step-by-step -step guide on how your thought process thought process should go when you're in a combat. Okay, we have recursion. Um. And I recently became aware, if you read the text on Accursion, it says, evoke your next orb, channel the orb that was just evoked. And for Frost and Lightning, it's pretty straightforward. You just uh, evoke an orb, channel an orb. But for dark orbs, you channel the orb that was just evoked. So the orb is the, you know, hovering glowy thing, and darkness orbs have a, ch a charge on them. Which represents, you know, how much damage has been saved up over turns, and will be dealt when evoked. And when you recur a darkness orb, it retains its charge. So you could have a darkness orb that's about to do 30 damage, evoke it with recursion, and now it's in the back of your orb slots. Now it's in the back of your orb line. Ready to do 30 damage again. <clears throat> Now we have Ball of Lightning, deal 7 damage, channel 1 lightning, very good card in my opinion. Deals damage and channels an orb. Another damaging orb. Which will then do passive damage or can be evoked for even more damage. And then we have Auto Shields. If you have no block, gain 11 block. Well, since block disappears at the end of a turn, at the beginning of your turn, it is often the case you have no block, so you can play this and get 11. <sighs> if you make the mistake of playing a defend and then auto shields, Well, you're wasting energy. Because <laughs> auto shields won't do anything. I'm still going to go for the damage, so I'm going to get the ball lightning. I've got three, a three, three ways split in the path here. I could go to an unknown, an enemy, or a shop. If I go to the unknown, I have no chance of fighting the elite that is up ahead. 
so I don't want to do that. If I go to the right, I can do some chopping for some additional cards that might help me and maybe remove a card. If I go down the middle, I'll have two more combats and then the elite. I like the right path. Say, shock gives you more variety of card choices than a normal combat does. A normal enemy does, I should say. I'm going to pick up a go for the eyes and remove a card. The interesting thing about this turn is, I have rebound here, right? I could play it, and then rebound a strike or a defend. Or, I could play it last, and not rebound anything not put anything back on top of my draw pile because none of these cards I I'm not interested in putting any of these cards on top of my draw pile because I don't want to draw strikes and defends on my next turn so I think the correct play is a strike a defend and a rebound I think I have lethal here. Oops, I'm weakened. <laughs> aye, aye, aye. Well, okay. It all worked out. <laughs> so I did have lethal. I just didn't really calculate it in my head beforehand. Okay, Flex Potion, that's a nice little boost. here for me is do I really need another attack card or should I pick up a skill like cool headed
I'm not sure. Oh. Claw is decent, you know, damage for zero energy. Gets better as you play it more. Rebound is solid damage, plus you get to... Decide... What in your hand you want to see on your next turn. I'm gonna go for a cool headed. Already got some good attack cards, like Rebound, Compile Driver. We can go for the eyes. So we got Gremlin Knob, so I'm sort of regretting my last deci card decision. Gonna take 14 points of damage. Okay, well, upgrade two random attacks. But before. Another little trick I've learned from watching the pros is anytime they've got a card reward, plus there's something that affects your deck on pickup, like this whetstone. You always choose the card reward first because then you have a higher chance of the relic you just picked up affecting your newer cards. The newer cards aren't always better cards, but they're usually um, nice additions to your deck. Bias Cognition, gain four focus, at the start of your turn, lose one focus. Hmm. I do like focus. <laughs> Beam Cell is a good attack. Deal 3, apply 1 vulnerable. Hologram is gain 3 block, put a card from your discard pile into your hand. Exhaust. So say you play a card, goes in your discard pile, play hologram, you can get that card back and play it again. Oh, 
or you can play a card from your discard pile that was played some turns ago. So that's pretty good. I'm going to grab Beam Cell though, just because we have the Whetstone here. Oh, and it got upgraded. <laughs> Alright. So that's why we did that. Alright, we get an Energy Potion. Very nice. Okay, there's only one move forward. We got a big old acid slime here. We need to do 34 points of damage in order to split it. For a big attack here, but if we do 46 minus 34, if we do 12 points of damage, we will interrupt his current attack. Which we can do with, let's see, that's 5, 2 is 7. Plus four is eleven. Plus three from the Okay. We will be able to split him on this turn. Going to rebound dual cast. And I should have played Beam Cell first because then the Vulnerable would have applied to my rebound attack. Yeah, my uh, YouTube videos on Slay the Spire are not instructive videos on how to play the game well. <laughs> They're instructive, but just not on how to play the game well. See where this let's see, what's this potion? Five strength, maybe eleven. Yeah, let's drink this potion. Whoop! That was the energy potion. <laughs> Whoops, it easy.
Well, whatever. <laughs> I'd have possibly just um, wasted an energy potion there, but uh, whatever. I have a choice between cool headed sweeping beam and chill. I think I will grab a chill. And now I have two options before me. Take an unknown or take an enemy. If I take an enemy, I'm forced to go into a shop with not very much gold. So I'll go left. Take the curse and the gold. Okay, the ancient tea sets, that's pretty good. Now I can afford something, so I might as well go to the merchant. Combat reward screens now contain colorless cards and cards from other colors. I could make this run pretty interesting. Can't afford this. The kunai, every time you play three attacks in a single turn, gain one dexterity. <sighs> um, I'm just going to grab a leap and remove a card. Whoops. Forgot to remove the curse. Oh well. <laughs> I snap. <sighs> it's so automatic to remove a strike, I forgot I could. Uh... <sighs> remove a curse. Oh, and there we go. <laughs> Let's remove the curse. <laughs> I 
We got lucky. This is Lag of Woolen, which gives us some time to set up our lightning orbs. Or frost orbs. Oops. Ah. <laughs> Missed out on some extra damage there. All right, we've got 11 points of block here, so that's acceptable. Should have planned that out better. <laughs> I forgot about rebound. Six damage. Plus four. Plus ten. Plus nine is nineteen. So we have lethal. A blue candle. Unplayable curse cards can now be played whenever you play a curse, lose one HP and exhaust it. Okay. So we can be less skittish about Obtaining curses. <sighs> I really do like Streamline, it's one of my favorite cards. Chaos is pretty variable. <laughs> and cool, how cool headed is a nice, solid defensive card. I'm going to take Streamline, though.
Let's upgrade the basic sap that you start off with. Why not? It's zero energy. Now. Thirty-two damage incoming. Holy shit. <laughs> but, you know, I remember that if I do six points of damage, you'll go into defensive mode, so... Uh. I need to chew through 15 total points of... I need to deal 15 total points of damage. So here's eight. What's this potion? An attack potion. Might as well drink it now. Was a good uh that was a good attack potion. Had uh, more energy than I knew what to do with. In my sequencing of card plays, was probably not the best.
So this is four, 13, 19. This is four, 13, nine. We beat the Guardian! Alright. Seek multicast or biased cognition. I like focus with the defect a lot. Multicast is also a pretty good card. Seek is pretty good as well. I am going to pick up multicast. Busted crown, gain energy at the start of your turn. Future card boards have less, two less cards to choose from. The coffee dripper, you can no longer gain, no longer rest at rest sites. But you gain an energy. And the runic dome. Gain energy at the start of your turn, you can no longer see enemy intents. So if I knew the enemies of Slay the Spire, like the back of my hand, then the Runic Dome would be... the relic I would pick up, but I do not. I'm just gonna go with the Busted Crown. 